Hi everyone. Today I wanted to talk to you about line and mark making. Each artist has their own sort of mark that they make, their signature style of mark making. And today I brought two artists, Bryce Martin and Ingrid Colum, both American artists that are alive now. And I wanted to share with you their work and the type of marks that they've made and the how and why of what they do. So let's take a look. This is Bryce Martin in his studio and you can see that he does these large gestural works with line. It's a continuous line, one that you don't lift up your pencil or your paintbrush and it just keeps on going. Bryce Martin works with all kinds of different tools to make his marks. He can use his sticks, you can see here, brushes, all kinds of things. And that's key to the type of mark you're making, what kind of tool you're using, how you're using it, how hard you're pressing. If you're using your whole body, like he is here in this picture, or if you're scrunched up and just drawing really tiny. A famous art critic called his work snakes in a box. It just looked like all these snakes in a box or a bunch of spaghetti. And you can really see that image here. You get the feeling. And you also get the feeling of the, the gesture, how his arm, his whole body moved working around this painting. And he liked to make limits, make rules for himself. He said, I can only use three colors and it has to be one line. But then he liked to break his rules too. So that's kind of fun to work that way. See if you can follow a line around this painting or figure out which line he did first and which he did last. The yellow one looks like it goes over the blue and the red. Oh, but now I see the blue going over the yellow. See, so it's really interesting if you look for a while. This painting you can see here, it's in the SF MoMA. So you can go visit it and it's huge. It's, you know, at least six feet tall and if you spread out your arms, it's probably four or five of you. Bryce Martin got really interested in calligraphy. And this was done based on a poem by a Chinese poet, Han Shan, which means cold mountain. And he liked the visual form of the calligraphy, the square grid standard, but also the gesture of calligraphy when done with ink and a brush, you can really see the shadow of the hand and the movement of your hand. And so he was thinking about those things when he did this painting, but also the story of the poem, which is about some Zen monks wandering the forest looking for peace and enlightenment. And it was said when they crossed this stone bridge that they would achieve that. So that's the story why the painting is called Cold Mountain Six Bridge. And he did a lot of these. So this is only number six. And here you can see, this is a detail shot I took when I visited the painting. And you can see these ghost lines that he calls them, you know, the lines that he put in and then he may have painted over or erased. And they give a real history to the painting and a thought of what comes before and after and sort of a story. Ingrid Cullum has a totally different way of working. She visits places and does tracings of the stains and the marks that she sees on the ground, which sort of tell a history and a story, much like the ghost marks of a place. So this is a project that she worked on, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in Indiana, and that's a racetrack. And when she looked at the ground there, there were all kinds of marks from the cars going in and out of the pit stops and around the turns. And she traced them all on this um, transparent mylar paper. And she created these drawings with layers and layers of the tracing. And she started out tracing paintings on her studio floor and was really interested in the stains of paint down there. And later it grew so big, she needed assistance to trace them, many people working to trace all those marks. Each person had their own handwriting and their own mark that they made. So you could see a little bit of the person depending on who was doing the tracings. Later, she takes these tracings and creates paintings out of them by sort of coloring in the different painting in the different areas that the lines make. And she doesn't paint over anything, it's one complete sheet of painting, but nothing's overlapping. It's just almost like when you do a paint by number, you're always in the lines. You're not building a painting, but you're doing it shape by shape. 
Here's an exhibit she did based on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway tracings. She put them all on the wall in this gallery. So they held up the tracings and they had made a second sheet and poked little dots along the lines and then pressed pigment through that to make the colors on the wall. And they overlapped this and did this with all the different colors to make this pattern. And you can really get the feeling of the raceway here. And here's a detail of that. You can see that there's some overlapping of the different patterns and lines. So she's combined different drawings and tracings on top of each other. So she is a really interesting way of working and building pieces based on the history of a place and the evidence she sees there. And one thing she said was that the ground is ignored. It's a lost place. But there's so much information there that talks about the relationship between people and their environment and things in their environment. And that's what she's interested in. We've looked at Bryce Martin and Ingrid Colomb and looked at the very different marks that make up the language of their paintings. These very loopy gestural marks that Bryce Martin makes and these delicate, intricate tracings that Ingrid Colomb makes and how they build paintings from that sort of language that they've created. So today I have a challenge for you. I'd like you to think about what kind of mark you'd like to make. And you can try different things. You can try working with tracings or gestural marks or any type of language. And I want you to practice some marks and see if you can make a drawing or a painting that's completely made up of marks. And you can layer them and overlap them or enlarge them, make them tiny, and do whatever you want to do with them. You can do, use whatever media you have around, some paper, pencil, crayon colored pencils, paints if you have them, markers, anything will work. But try to create your personal mark, just like we each have our own handwriting. Each artist has their own mark that they make. When I was looking around for inspiration, I kept thinking about Ingrid Cullum's fascination with the ground. So I looked down at the studio floor and I really like the history of these blue drips from painting in here. So I thought I would do sort of a mark based on that. And I didn't trace them, I just looked at them and did continuous line drawings really exaggerating the bumpiness around the dots. I tried to get the feeling of the splatters and didn't really lift up my pen until I wanted to move to a different group of splatters. And I had fun doing these and I think I could add some color areas or maybe a wash of some paint or something like that and make it really interesting or actually add some bigger, more enlarged drops that would make it interesting too. I hope you had fun working with your own marks and challenging yourself to create something that was your language. And I can't wait to see what you experimented with.